So today we're going to talk about stow, safe torque off. So taking a look at the data sheet for the product, we see there's safety, which meets the SIL 3, category 3. Uh, the SIL 3 safety can be achieved using the hardware stow, safe torque off. And this is an IEC 61508 standard. And it's, uh, it's approved by TUBSUD, or I guess UL can do the safety certification now too. But um, this also points to the STO manual. So this is a requirement of safety is to actually have a manual that describes how it works and what you do. Um, but these are all the safety standards that uh, are required the drive to be certified to in order to get STO in order to reach your SIL 3 safety requirement. So before we go look for the safety documents, uh, I just want to show that uh, the Copley Applications Engineers have been certified uh, for as safety functional safety engineers. So we had to take some TUBSUD uh, training, training courses and pass an examination to receive certification. Um, this will allow us uh, to be able to read the manual and understand what it says. So uh, this is a good start here. I'm going to go through a little bit about the uh, functional safety and how did we get to this stow requirement through a SIL 3 level. And then we'll take a look at the manual and figure out how to read it. So this is the basic functional safety uh, PowerPoint. Uh, we can see that functional safety has a lot of standards and certifications to go with it. Um, the basic idea, though, is if you make a machine, somebody could get hurt. If somebody could die, then you better have, uh, you know, SIL-3 safety on it. Um, these uh, standards have been adopted, and they change over time, so we have to keep adapting to them. Uh, but the drives, the motor drives, can have integrated functional safety to keep your system costs lowered. So uh, the reason we're putting it in the, into the drive is so that, one, you can meet the safety requirements, and two, you can save some money on the way. Um, an example of uh, STO, safe torque off, um, is, is a system that you could, you know, get your arm into and, and get it cut off and then, you know, cause death, of course. Um, but the, the DC buses can remain charged and um, only the low vo voltage currents can be switched. Uh, and, and by switching these, we can reduce the complexity in the system. So in your machine, you'll have a risk assessment you either have a high risk or a low risk. Uh, so if you look at some of the probability uh, to determine if, if it's, you know, how, 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 how reliable it is, uh, what's your exposure, and what's the severity of the risk. So if your risk severity is high and your exposure is high, uh, then, then that will determine the SIL level. And of course, you know, you, you have to avoid SIL 4, you know, like you, there is an extremely high chance that you will die and it's very likely that you'll die. And so, so that's something to be avoided. Um, so SIL 3 is kind of the target for the worst case, uh, where SIL 4 is something that nobody would wanna, wanna obtain anyways. So SIL-3 is, is, is the accumulation of uh, both uh, likelihood and severity. And so, there, yeah, there it is for your, uh, uh, that's what we have to reduce. Um, and today, there's a lot of relays that get put in between the drive and the motor uh, to keep the system safe. And the idea is to reduce the amount of relay contactors between the drive and the motor and keep it simple. So this is purely a, a safety switch with a safety relay connected to the stow output, which disables the drive, disconnects the H bridge from the motors, and you no longer need all the excessive components for 
disconnection. Um, you can see the uh, safe torque off in the drive. Uh, to bypass it, we put some jumpers in, but it's, it's a double circuit. So if one circuit fails, then the other one will pick up. So uh, the detection of uh, failure is, is very high with the redundant circuit. And uh, you can see the functionality of this is directly to the H-bridge output. So there's no way to get current out to the motor because we've gone directly to the H-bridge. So you know, the idea that your software could go crazy or somebody commanded it to do that, like it's, that's totally out of the equation and it's not part of the safety circuit at all. Um, so various drives uh, have the STO certification and for Copley that will be the, the metal covered drives. Um, in the future there'll be EtherCAT, functional safety over EtherCAT, that's something that's being developed. And then as things develop into the future, we'll have new functioning capability. So uh, this is the money shot from the Stowe manual, and it shows a Copley drive with a switch and a relay that has an instantaneous contact and delayed contact. So before you disconnect the Stowe circuit, you probably should want to come to a controlled stop. So the inst instantaneous relay closes to tell the drive to hardware disable. And uh, after you've come to a stop, there's a period of time for which the delayed contact are closed and disconnects the output stage from the device. So as you reach your hand into the machine, maybe you pass a light curtain or hit the e-stop, and then the drive comes to a controlled stop using the uh, abort decel rates, and then the contactor closes to disconnect the output stage. So, you know, even if something were to fail here somehow, at the end of the day, you could coast to a stop and then be safe. So let's see if we can find this manual. So I'm on the Copley web page under support, under Zenus, under manuals. We can locate the STOW manual for the XC2, XP2. So in the STOW manual, there's great details and writings about safety, but for the calculations, you need to know the PFD, and uh, the PFD is defined as the probability of dangerous failure upon demand. Um, is the PFH and uh, the numbers here are used in the calculations according to the standards to reach your SIL 3. So these numbers are taken from the manual and used in your calculation. Um, so you can see like the probability is 20 years or the, or the CCF is 100 years. Um, so these are like the failure rates, uh, predictable, statistically and analyzed uh, failure rates according to the, the specifications. So here I have a safety switch. This is not just an ordinary button. This is designed by the safety guys, pills. Uh, you can't just use an ordinary switch. You have to use a safety switch for your safety circuit. Um, this is also a safety relay. So these guys also, PILS makes a safety relay. So the hardware is designed to be safe and any software you use to configure it is safety software. And these things get connected to your drive. Um, here we have the safe torque input and here we have the normal hardware input and we have a motor connected running. So I have it just doing some motion profiles right now without the safety. And we can see on the main CME2 screen, the, the software is enabled, the hardware is enabled, and the STO is inactive. So I'm going to remove the bypass jumper here, and I'm using a, uh, a part, uh, bypass part that I got from engineering here. So you can see that we've become STO active and the hardware disabled. Uh, at this point, the system would be coasting. Um, if we put the system back together, then we're 
or stow activated, um, I'm going to have to run my CVM program again uh, because it, it aborted. But let's run our back and forth motion. And uh, we have to take a look at configuring to come to a controlled stop before the stow gets activated. So the relay has an instantaneous contact, which gets connected to the drive, and then it's a, a, a instantaneous, which gets connected to the drive signal input, and then a delayed 200 milliseconds later, perhaps, which goes to the stow to uh, disable the, the H bridge permanently. So come to a controlled stop first, and then uh, disable the output stage. So for configuration, we look on the stop screen. We can set the time it's going to take to stop normally, plus a little bit, and the speed at which we consider ourselves stopped at. And then if you have a brake, which this does, there's a delay time to turn the brake on. This is a mechanical time constant. After you stop, you have to wait for the solenoid to kick in. So you have to servo and hold until such time as the brake actually engages. So that's the PWM delay brake stop response time. Additionally, you need to configure the abort decel rate. Uh, so I've set this to be twice as long as my maximum, but you could make it twice as fast if you like. But be careful, you also have an abort jerk, which uh, comes, you know, makes the, the jerk in the system less. Just don't set that too small because then you'll never be able to stop before the brake is turned on. So we'll take a look at this. Again, on the relay, the immediate contactor will be connected to an input such as input one. And when I hit the stop, it will immediately hardware disable the drive before the stow is cut. So to simulate that, I'm going to click on the input output screen and look at N1, which is active low enable. And when it goes high, I'm going to disable. I've got the trigger set up on the scope to trigger on the amp disabled by hardware so that I can capture what happens in the sequence of events. So I'm going to disable while I'm spinning so we can see what happens when we're at speed. OK, so I disabled while we were at velocity and the scope will gather the information for us. And here we go. We've got the uh, abort, the hardware disable, the abort decel rate, and then the wait before we turn the brake on time. And that's a controlled stop. So again, uh, before you jump out of the car, stop the car and then jump out. And uh, this, is, this has been the safety uh, presentation. And while I have a moment left, we can see these TUVSUD guys are really good at training. Uh, we met Christopher here, Christian, who's been um, a trainer for 12 years, a uh, really good guy, uh, gives a lot of insight. And uh, we also worked with Thomas Mayer. And uh, I believe these guys are in the US now doing their to so training seminars and trying to get safety to be as much a uh, requirement in the US as it is in Europe. And thanks to these guys, I think we're well on our way to get there.